Hi, this is Anu and welcome back to my channel. Today it is all about knitting. But first of all, how are you guys? I have had a few of my worst weeks since beginning of COVID. I was doing pretty well for the first year, maybe. <laughs> what do we know? For the first, I would say, eight months. I was plowing through, you know, like a roller coaster, like all of us. But in the past few weeks, I found myself with my energy so low and being so overwhelmed. And for the first time in a long time, my creativity juice was kind of almost inexistent. I was like, oh, what am I going to do? That never happened to me, never happened to me until I saw the inauguration of our new president-elect Joe Biden and, and I saw Bernie and he made me smile. I loved watching him sitting there with his mittens trying to stay warm and I thought it was the cutest thing ever. And then when all the memes, you know the memes here, I'll put a few here, popped out, I thought it was just the funniest thing ever. I also read that he doesn't mind and he appreciates it and he was so kind to actually talk about the lady that created those mittens that actually has a little store in Vermont and she's so overwhelmed uh, with the demand now for those Bernie's mittens that she cannot even produce them fast enough. So I figured out I would create my version of Bernie's cute mittens and I tried to do it in crochet but I it didn't succeed really it it came out not as nice as knitted so since my channel is now both I thought I would create those for the knitting people among us it is I would say an intermediate difficulty um, pattern I will as usually take you slowly but surely I am created a little dia diagram with my uh, um, amazing help Michaela uh, she will of course put it in the written pattern for my blog and make probably one or two different sizes as well my blog uh, address is right there I get this uh, question a lot of time you know do you have this but in other sizes and I repeat myself all my patterns come in so many different sizes from extra small to 5xl uh, and they're all on this blog. So if you like something and you see it, uh, something in my, you know, my, my videos that you like, but it's not the right size, because of course I create things for me and I'm usually either a small or a medium, um, then it's there. It is on my blog. You will find the pattern. Oof, I am so hot right now. Uh, that's the age, my friends, that's the age. <laughs> So anyway, so today these here are the beautiful, uh, cute mittens and of course you don't have to choose those colors. I chose the Barocco Comfort yarn, which is extremely inexpensive. Uh, I had four colors for this mitten, so I think that it's about $5 per skein and with four skeins, because it's four colors, so you need one of each color. I would be able to create two pairs of mittens. So that's really, really nice. Uh, if you have somebody that you know that can line them with fleece, it would be perfect. Um, I do not know how to sew, so I might ask my mother-in-law to do it for me. So one thing that I like about those mittens, even though they are knitted, they're not knitted in the round, they're knitted flat. And then we sew them together and then we create the thumb. So cannot wait to show you how to. If you are not subscribed to my channel, don't hesitate to do so. It's totally free. Click on the subscribe button and then also put a little like if you see something that you like that actually makes me happy and it shows YouTube that you are appreciating my um, videos and then more people could see it. Don't hesitate to share it with your friends as well. That makes me happy too. But yeah, that is it. So if you are interested in knowing how to create this adorable Bernie's inauguration mittens then keep on watching and I will see you next time with more energy I promise bye for this tutorial I use four color they're the Barocco comfort yarn the brown one number color is 9787 
the top one color is 9703 cream one is 9702 and the dark brown is 9786 I used a 13 inch circular needle that's the length the size was five and a half millimeter and then the nine inch one as well for the thumb you will need some scissors and a tapestry needle all right are you ready we are going to begin by creating the cuffs you are going to take your five and a half millimeter um, knitting needle I like circular needle but of course you do you and you are going to cast on using your favorite cast on method I don't even know what my method is I think it's European style you can go back to my channel I will put the link to the how to tutorial how to cast on if you need a refresher but I did cast on 34 stitches in total and I will meet you once you have 34 stitches. Here you go, we have our 34 stitches casted on and i am going to just uh until it's too long i'm cutting it all right so for the cuffs i chose the two by two ribbing so which means that it's two knitting here is one and here is two knitting stitches and then two purl stitches and you repeat this all along so two knitting there you go one two and then two purl and you do that all along i will meet you at the end of your first row by the way i don't know if you ever noticed but my studio is on top of the garage where my husband practices his golf swing so if you hear a weird sound in the background once in a while this is what it is all right so you are at the end of your first row and for the second row, turn around and you will begin by making two pearls this time. So just respect the stitch as it comes to you. This is a pearl, so one pearl, two pearl, and then two knit. Still working on 34 stitches in total. There you go. So you're going to repeat row one and two until the end of row 14. And then row 15 will be a row of increase. We are going to create increase by knitting in the same stitch. Two stitches in one stitch. I'll show you how again in slow motion. Okay, so you pass your needle through the stitch, yarn over and back and up you push you have kind of half a stitch on one needle and half on the other and then you go in the back of that same stitch pass your crochet hook again yarn over and push the stitch back and that's it now you created two stitches in the same first knit stitch all right then you're going to do three regular knit stitches. And again, let's do it in slow motion. You're going from left to right into your stitch as a regular knit stitch. Yarn over and pass the stitch back. Just a regular knit stitch. But now you're going to go back into the back of that same stitch and make another knit stitch there. So yarn over and push that stitch back and here you go. You have a two stitches out of one. So you're going to repeat this all along that 15th row. So three regular knit stitches and then two knit stitches in the next all along. We want to have 44 stitches in total at the end of this uh, 15th row.
Here you go. So if you add an extra two knit stitch in the last stitch, you should have 44 stitches in total. And if not, then you add stitches in the next row, which is a row of purl all along. And I will meet you at the end of your 16th row. Row 17 is the beginning of the diagram. So we're going to begin by adding colors. And this is the diagram that we created for you. So the first row begins on the right and go from right to left. That's how you read this. And then the second row will begin from left to right. So you're going one way and the other way. So let's begin with your first row, which is row 17. You're going to join your cream yarn. You are right there at the chart. That's your first cream stitch. To join, you just wrap your new yarn around your working needle and you knit with it just like so. That's your first knit stitch. For your second one, you're going to put that white yarn on the side. Just let it hang. Take the brown yarn and pass it and create your second knit stitch and your third and your fourth. So you have one cream stitch and three brown stitches and then you have a white stitch again. So you're going to take your not the end yarn that you just joined but your working yarn, your main yarn and you're going to just, without too much tension, just in the back of your work, make a knit stitch doing like that with your white yarn. The important thing is not to tighten your yarn too much. Just knit now with the brown yarn. So you have one cream knitted stitch, three brown stitches one cream knitted stitch and now you're going to with the brown yarn make three knitted stitches there you go and now you take the white one again and without putting too much tension just place it in the back of your work like so and begin to knit your one stitch now you need to make three stitches with the brown color you take your brown yarn and still with the yarn in the back just over the white stitch from the back you make your three knit stitches and that is the pattern for this 17th row so you have uh, one cream knit stitch and three brown knit stitch the most important thing is not to pull too much on the new color when you use it and just pass the old color right in front of the old one in the back without putting too much tension and i will meet you at the end of your row 17 and you will end your 17th row with three brown stitches and this is what the front will look like and the back of your work will look like so if you look at the chart, every odd row is knitted from right to left in our diagram and every even one, like the one we're doing now, row 18, will be a purl row and read from left to right from the diagram. Okay, so now we are at row 18 and you are there on the left part of our chart and we are going to purl three brown. 
one two and three and now as you can see in your chart time for a white cream pearl And now time for three pearl brown. One, two, and three. And this is what you're going to continue to do all along this 18th row. So one cream, three brown, one pearl cream, three pearl brown. And I will meet you at the end of your 18th row. Here you see you are at the end of your second row it's at the end so you would end your row with one pearl with cream color turn your work around and we are at row 19 now row 19 will be a row of knit every odd row is knit every even row is pearl you are right there you're going to begin by making two knit with the cream yarn and then as you see in the chart, you have one brown knit. And then you have three cream knit. Here you are on the diagram. One, two, and three. And then one brown knit. And this is going to be what you're going to do for that 19th row. Three cream one brown three cream one brown and i will meet you at the end of this 19th row So now you understand how to read the chart and um, you are going to follow the diagram that I that I gave you continuing with the same technique. So here is row 20. You will begin to read the chart from the left to the right. You will begin with one pearl cream and then making one pearl brown and then making three pearl cream one pearl brown three pearl cream one pearl brown and that will be your 20th row and i will meet you at the end of your row 20. Since I'm not going to use the brown yarn for a while and I don't like to have a lot of yarn hanging, they all keep getting untangled, I'm fastening off and I'm taking my third color. Your taupe color, row 21, will be a knitted right, row. This is where Take I your am new right color now and knit one. Join and knit one. Then you see on the chart you have three knit with the cream yarn. One, two, and three and then you have one knit with the top yarn leave the end yarn take your working yarn what i like to do is also tie a knot at my end yarns so it doesn't unravel just to secure it and one top and three cream and that is what you're going to continue to do all along your 21st row so you're beginning to get the gist of it 
you just need to follow the diagram knitting on the diagram is red from right to left purling is red from left to right and of course the diagram will be available to print on my blog Okay, so now for a row 22, we're going to do three. We're going to purl, of course, because it is an even row. And we're going to begin by making three cream pearls. One, two, and three. And one pearl top. And repeat this all along that 20 seconds row. Three cream pearls, one taupe pearl. All along your row 22. You are at row 23. It's a knitted row. You begin to read the diagram from right to left. This is where you are. I'm going to knit two with your top color. And then make one knit with your cream. And then you're going to make three knit in top color, one knit in cream color. And that is going to be the pattern all along this 23rd row. You go and this is what your work will look like for your 23rd row. This is what your work will look like from the back and the front. I think it's super pretty. And here you go for row 24. You begin from the left since it is a even pearl row. You begin by making one top pearl and then one cream pearl. And then for the rest of the row, it will be three top pearl, one cream pearl, three top pearl, one cream pearl. And that is for your 24th row. It is really beginning to take shape it is so pretty i love the colors i love the style so not only will you know how to create mittens bernie's mittens but you just learn how to change color in knitting and purling as well i just fasten off the cream uh, yarn because we're not going to use it for a little while so it doesn't get all entangled usually i do a, sl a slip knot uh, with that cream yarn just to make sure that it doesn't unravel and now we are at row 25 that is going to be a knitting row and you're going to grab your brown color your dark brown color this time and this is where you are right there at the right of your work that one knit with your dark brown then you're going to take your taupe yarn and you're going to make three taupe 
knit stitch and then one dark brown knit stitch and that is going to be the pattern for this 25th row so one dark brown knit three top one dark brown three top and i will meet you at the end of your 25th row Row 26 will be a pearl row and you're going to take your dark brown, make a pearl and then take your taupe and make a pearl. Then you're going to take your dark brown, you're going to pearl three and you're going to take your taupe and you're going to pearl one. This is going to be the pattern for this 26th row. One pearl in taupe and three in dark brown. One pearl in taupe. It's the front of your work. And you continue like that all over your row. You finish your row ending with one stitch with top, one stitch right, with Right, for your 27th row, brown. it's going to be a you row are the of 27th knitting. row. You are right there and you're going to knit two in dark brown. And then one in top. And then three in dark brown. And one in taupe. And this is going to be uh, the pattern for this 27th row, ending with one taupe, one brown. At the end of your 27th row, you're going to fasten off the top. We won't need it for a little while. And make a little knot just to make sure it doesn't unravel. And let's do the 28th row. This time take your brown yarn. This is an even row, so it's a pearl row. We're going to begin on the chart from the left side, right there. So for this row, you will do a one pearl in brown, one pearl in dark brown, one pearl in brown, and one pearl in dark brown. And I will meet you at the end of your row 28. And you will end your 28th row with one pearl in dark brown. And now we are going to tackle row 29, which will be a row of knitting. And as you see on the diagram, you're going to begin there and do one knit with dark brown, one knit with brown, 
one knit with dark, dark brown, one knit with brown, ending your row with one knit with brown. And I will meet you at the end of your 29th row. You can fasten off your dark brown, you won't need it for a little while. Make a knot to secure it. We're going to take a break of changing colors for a few rows. So this is row 30 and it's going, it is going to be an all pearl row. So you're going to purl all along with your brown color. I'll meet you at the end of row 30. Row 31 will be of course a neat row since it's uh, odd, but here is the row where we're going to prepare the opening for our thumb. So what you're going to do is knit four with the brown color and take a little strap of bright color and a tapestry needle. And you're going to pass this needle with the blue strap through those four stitches. You're going to set them aside, leave them as they are, securing them with a double knot. Now that they are secure, leave them aside. All right, so you're going to begin your row knitting with brown. So you're continuing your row 31, just knitting, but you're going to stop before the four la last stitches. And you're going to take your needle with the second little piece of strap, you're going to put those four last stitches through with your tapestry needle. Make sure you secure really well because you really do not want them to unravel as they wait to be used for the thumb. So double or triple knot up and let them be. Now remember we used to be working on 44 stitches, we will be working on 36 stitches. Here we go. So we are at the end of row 31 and now for row 32 you're going to purl all along and for row 33 you're going to knit all along. And I will meet you after at the end of row 33. So two rows, one of purl, one of knit. Still with the brown color. Feels good not to have to change color for a little while. All right, so from row 34 to row 50, I'm going to let you follow the diagram. I think that by now you understand how to. So from right to left knitting, from left to right purling, following the color. And I will meet you at the end of your row 50. This is what your work will look like. So, so, so cute. Really, really like it. And I like this Barocco Comfort yarn, so versatile. You can wash it too, I wouldn't dry it, but. All right, so here you are at row 51. It is going to be a knitted row. It's going to be all in brown color. You're going to fasten off the cream yarn. You won't need it anymore. Making my little knot to secure it. And for your 51st row, you're going to knit all along. And for your 52nd row, you're going to purl all along. And now you are at your row 53. And we're shaping our mittens. We're going to begin to decrease. So row 53 will be a row of decrease. You're going to 
make one knit and then knit two together and I'll show you how to knit two together in slow motion. Okay so you're going to knit one with your brown color then you're going to knit through two stitches at one time so instead of taking one stitch you take two yarn over and knit regularly as if you were doing a regular knit stitch I'll show you to I will show it to you again so now you're going to knit one again regular and then again take two stitches together the same way you take one so from left to right going through the front leg of both of the stitches yarn over and just take the two stitches with you as you come back and just like that you made one stitches from two you decreased and that's what you're going to do all along that 53rd row so one regular knit and then a decrease one regular knit and then a decrease and i will meet you at the end of row 53. we are shaping at the end of our mittens we're almost done with the body you go we are at the end of row 53 row 54 will be a row of decrease as well still with the brown color but then you're going to purl two together all along and to purl two together super easy you just take two stitches instead of one pass your crochet hook from left to right sorry from right to left yarn over and take both of the stitches off your main needle let's do it again instead of taking one purl you take two together and you treat them as one purl stitch yarn over both of the loops bring them up from your main needle to the working needle and you're going to do that all along that 54th row i will meet you at the end of your 54th row And here you go. So this is what the mitten will look like. We haven't assembled it yet, of course. It's just a kind of a rectangle decreasing at the top. And for row 55, you cast off. Casting off is just knitting two and passing one over the other. You knit another one, pass the first one over the second one. That is all there is to casting off. And once you are casting off all your stitches you are going to take your scissors and fasten off and you're basically done with the body of your mitt When I fasten off, I leave about a six inch tail, just in case I feel like sewing the top, but I think I am going to slip stitch with my crochet. But if you sew it, you can use this to sew in the top. This is what your work will look like. So here you go. You can see the two sides where we had left the four stitches for the thumbs. 
what you're going to do now is take a tapestry needle and sew in all the loose tails at the back of your work so it will be neat and you won't have all those little stragglers on the side Once it is all neat, we're going to assemble your mitt together and we're going to begin with, I do it with my crochet slip stitch, you can do it with a tapestry needle. So we're going to go one row below where we had left those four uh, stitches on the blue string, one row below. I'm going to take my brown yarn and I am going to assemble all the way down to the bottom of the cuff matching stitch to stitch either you do it with a tapestry needle sewing it together you can block them if you want before i never block my things i don't know it really intimidates me and i i love the, um, the chunky natural look of unblocked um, products but that's a choice it might make it easier for you to sew it together if you block it i don't care I like it just like that. So I'm assembling from one row below the four stitches we had left. And of course on the wrong side of my work facing me, right? All the way along the cuff. When I reach the bottom of the cuff, up fast enough. And I sew in the loose tail again. Alright, now I'm going to assemble the top part, still leaving those uh, four stitches untouched. But I'm going to begin counting three rows over those little four stitches we had left. So three rows over, one, two, three, the fourth one, I'm beginning to assemble from there all the way to the top of my mitten. Slip stitching the same way, matching the pattern stitch to stitch. Your patterns should uh, match. When I reach the top, the last row where we had cast off, I'm going to assemble that together as well with my crochet. But again, feel free to do it with your tapestry needle, it does not matter. All right, time to tackle the thumb. So turn your work right side facing you again. Oh, here you go. That is where your thumb will go. So time to take that tiny little circular needle I was talking to you at the beginning of our tutorial. And you're going to gently pass the circular needle through those four stitches that you had left waiting on the side make sure not to lose them one two three four you should you could do it with a tiny knitting needle one knitting needle and another i really like the circular needle i think because it's so tiny it really helps me to maneuver it better but you do you some people do it also with four knitting needles a double pointed one I like this way and I'm showing you how I do it but you do you again <laughs> so I picked up the four the eight actually four and four stitched we had left they were on both sides of our work but now that we assemble it they're together I want in total to have 12 stitches 
or 14 stitches even to give my thumb a comfortable uh, little cozy surrounding <laughs> pocket for my thumb so what I'm going to do is pick up three stitches on the way up and three stitches on the way down right there and the way you pick up is almost like casting off or eh, I'll show you here you go so you take your knitting needle and you put it in the stitch on the side of your work the one that you want to pick up right there then you're going to take your yarn and you're going to wrap it around as if you were joining and assembling and then you're going to pull in and make a stitch here you go and you're going to go to the next that's one and you're going to do it again leave the end yarn take the working yarn and up wrap it around your stitch and as if you were knitting from the side of your work one more so you have three on one side and then you're going to go three take three on the other side and I will meet you once you have 14 stitches in total here you go you have 14 stitches on that little tiny circular needle but we're not going to knit in the round that would be really too hard we're going to make rows and rows so now you're going to purl through those 14 stitches on your knitting needle the first row is the trickiest and then after that it gets easier so purl 14 on that tiny 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 circular needle i know it's tricky but it's worthwhile you're almost there you're almost done guys creating those beautiful burning mittens okay so you are that's your purl row and now you're going to do a neat row then a purl row and then a neat row until you have enough rows to cover your thumb for me it was about 13 rows back and forth purl knit purl knit purl knit on those 14 stitches i will meet you at the end of the 13th row Perfect, it fits my thumb really well. Now it's time to decrease to give it the little shape and we're almost done guys. And of course I know that now is the Bernie's madness with those specific pattern, but at the same time you learned how to shape and create mitten and you can change the colors and you can change the style, but the basic shape will stay the same. So do with that whatever you wish, of course. All right, so you're going to purl two together all along for this decrease row of your thumb. So purl two together all along. Right now we are going to, for this uh, 15th row of your thumb, cast off. So knit two, one over the, the first one over the second, and knit another one, first one over the second. That's how you cast off. Once you cast it off, you are going to fasten off, leaving a long tail for your thumb and to be able to sew in the side of your thumb your thumb <laughs> you're going to turn your work wrong side facing you again so cute and you're going to assemble the thumb together i did it from the top all the way to the bottom
and when you reach the bottom make sure that is there is no little hole peeking through so try your mitten on see that it's really tight right there there's no gap if there is one just one little sewing stitch and that does the trick see right there here we go awesome you fasten off put it back the right way and you are done with your mitt now you just have to create a second one <laughs> Here we go. Here you go. So I hope you have enjoyed creating this knitted mitten pattern with me. I'm looking forward to create many more. Next time will be a crochet tutorial. And I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and healthy. And that's it. Love you. See you next time. Happy knitting. Bye.